Hey everybody, welcome to part three of the music vlog. Okay, the spider has finally decided to move. If you watched part one, I talked about him. He's like crawling up the wall. He's a big spider. Okay, so this is part three of our discussion on practicing tips slash Q&A about practicing the piano. And the first question we're gonna start out with is, I really love the piano. How can I start learning it? My biggest piece of advice is to find a teacher. I say this because a teacher can help you guide your learning. Secondly, make sure that you are not teaching yourself incorrect posture and everything so that you don't develop injury. They know everything about the piano so they can guide you to learning it. If you can't find a teacher right now or if you're just unable to for reasons, I understand. There are lots of online resources you can use. And that actually leads into the next question, which is if I don't have academic Ac academic. If I don't have academic teaching in my country, what do I have to improve my skills by myself? So there are tons of resources online. Even if you just do a search in the internet for like note reading tests or ear training or music theory, I would start with those. Um, depending on what your level is as a pianist already, if you're a total beginner and you can't find a teacher, I would start with learning how to read notes. You know, start by finding where middle C is on the piano and on the music staff, and then going from there, teaching yourself how to read notes and there are lots of online resources for those. I've actually linked a few in the description, so go check those out if you're interested. If you are at a more advanced level, like you already know how to read notes, you can already play the piano a little bit, and you can't get a teacher right now, I would suggest that you learn about music theory, learn how chords work and how scales and key signatures work. If you're looking for a repertoire to play, there are lots of resources online for those, again, and you can just do a search for beginner piano repertoire or intermediate piano repertoire, and just kind of go from there. There are also piano method books that are for older pianists that include pieces and theory and things like that. Like Alfred has a good one and I believe the Piano Adventures method also has one which I've never had a student learn out of those by themselves but I think it could be done definitely. The links to those are also in the description. The next question is how to memorize a piece. My biggest tip for memorizing is to break the piece down into small sections. If you just have this piece of music in front of you and you're like holy cow this thing is like six pages and I have to memorize this it's a little bit intimidating but if you can cut it into small chunks it's not as intimidating. For example break it down into to you know four bars like a phrase or something if that's how the piece goes and just work on that first section those first four bars and memorize those and then go on to the next section and add it to the first so that way you're going in chunks progressively rather than just trying to jump in and do the whole thing all at once that's what I like to do when I'm memorizing so the last question in this series is how do you practice your dynamics and are there any exercises that you do every day? Like I mentioned in one of the previous sections of this vlog, I don't actually have any exercises that I do every day specifically. I do often play through a Bach chorale every morning and sometimes I'll do a scale or an arpeggio and then practicing dynamics. I think one way to practice dynamics is firstly in your music itself. So just even from the beginning, pay attention to your dynamics. In any exercise you do, any scales, you can practice dynamics going up and coming down and really just kind of focusing on hearing and listening to what it sounds like and focusing on what it feels like physically. I touched on this a little bit in part two of this series that dynamics don't come if you are pushing rather than letting the music kind of flow out of your body. I know that sounds weird, but it's true. You practice dynamics by letting your arm drop into the keys of the keyboard, by allowing gravity to kind of take over, and eventually if you can free up this whole front area in your shoulders and your arms, you'll be able to get incredible dynamics. All right, thanks for watching this vlog. I hope that my tips were helpful. If you have any other questions, let me know. If you want me to dive deeper into a subject that I touched on, let me know. I can only talk about so much in these vlogs because I don't want them to be, you know, two hours of me talking to you about dynamics. But I mean, if you're into that, let me know and we'll see. <laughs> if you like this video, let me know. Subscribe. I think that's it for today. I'll see you next time. Bye.